What is up players, it is Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to a video where I will be talking about my commitment towards Idik Beer's 2016 New Year Painting Challenge. I love that Nick is doing this again. His 2015 one was a great way to motivate people to get their work painted in the new year. Join in a, a little painting challenge where you can set the goal for yourself and choose anything you want and just paint it up in the new year. Kind of like a, a New Year's commitment. New Year's resolution. So mine, I, I first thought, well, I would do the Betrayal at Kalth set because I want to do a series of videos on them, painting them not in the Ultramarines and Word Bearers color schemes, but in the uh, color schemes of the first founding legions. I thought that would be fun, doing all of them in their, in their, I guess, uh, Mark. this is Mark IV armor, and uh, just painting them up like how how they are in in Warhammer 30k and then i realized i'm doing a a current project that's kind of been ongoing i've been doing it for a couple of years now just because i haven't i've been filming these on the side but they they were the uh project first founding where i let's see if i can even find it war boss Tay project first founding where i paint up each of the legions or chapters in their, yeah, here we go, in their original, or not original, but their current color scheme. So I've gone through every single legion, starting with Dark Angels, and I think I, I painted a Dark Angel up in the, from Dark Vengeance, and I've gone all the way through, Word Bearers, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, how they would look in their current color schemes. And my goal was always to finish this project because a lot of people who play Warhammer 40k search for for tutorials online and uh, you've probably seen awesome paint jobs, girl painting. A lot of people are putting up videos on how to paint Space Marines in their in their chapter colors. And so I thought, well, why don't I just go through every single legion in their 40k color schemes for anybody just as as an option as an alternative. And with the move last year up to California and starting the commission business, I kind of fell off the the tracks on that a bit. I think the last one that I did was for Salamanders. And I thought, well, why don't I get back into it, especially with the new year coming up and Idik Beer's challenge. So I'm going to be starting with the Raven Guard because the Raven Guard is the, I believe they're the 19th Legion. They're they're the ones that are after Salamanders in the uh, in the numbers. So they are the next one that I'm going to be doing, and uh, I think they have such great fluff and background and and uh, I guess a concept as a as a chapter now that they. Um, are swift. They uh, they come in like full speed. They they're not really like the white scars that are lightning fast in your face, in and out. These guys are the ones that kind of do the the research and the reconnaissance, and they uh, they find out where the enemy is weakest, and they do like precision strikes against those targets. So you'll see a lot of them with the jump packs, with the lightning claws, or uh, that kind of. They have that kind of, um, I guess, feel to them. So I think that when I'm building and painting up my submission, just because it's it's fluffy and it kind of matches the aesthetic that that Games Workshop and Forge Road kind of have for them, even their their pre heresy guide. Oh, actually, I, I don't think these are pre heresy. Yeah, these are from the later Forge World books that they've got the jump packs and they've got the Mark VI Corvus armor helmet, which is has a little beak, which have been kind of compared to or uh, labeled beaky, beaky marines. If you have this helmet with the pointed kind of beak in front, then they call them beaky. <laughs> but I'm, I think I'm going to be doing a, a space marine in a, a jump pack, either an assault marine or a vanguard veteran marine, just to just to give them a little bit of of flavor. And then we're going to be going on to the Alpha Legion who are who is great. This is great because they're kind of the uh they'll balance out the Raven Guard. The Raven Guard are the good guys that kind of go behind the lines and and uh use kind of covert black ops operations to to weaken the enemy. And the Alpha Legion is kind of like the sneaky underhanded version of that. 
and that they are also not one for full-on assaults with tanks and the armored fist assault. They go, again, behind the lines and they sneak around and you don't even know they're there until they are blowing everything up in your face. Again, blowing up supply lines, assassinating enemy commanders, sometimes impersonating the enemy, and uh, the fluff in the fiction be behind these two chapters, or this chapter and this war ban, is so interesting, and I really am excited to get started with those. So that's my that's my challenge for 2016, painting up and filming tutorials for the Raven Guard and the Alpha Legion. I hope you enjoy that. After that, my plan is, like I said, take these Marines from the Betrayal at Kalth set in their Mark IV armor and paint them up using the original First Founding Legion's original color schemes. And that's going to be so much fun because originally a lot of people don't know this. You do if you've been uh, involved in 40k and fluff and fiction for a, a while. But what you might not know is that the color schemes for the Space Marines now are sometimes often very different than what they were when the Legion was first founded in in Warhammer 30k. So the Raven Guard are an exception to that in that their 30k color scheme was black with white accent colors and silver accent colors and their current color scheme is pretty much identical. Their, the white Raven Guard was a symbol was their kind of like iconography and it still is today. Alpha Legion is a little bit different in that they uh, I think originally there was more of a bluish tone to their armor with some green accents and and uh, some silver trim. Let's see how my internet does. Yeah, the armor was more blue with a little bit of of dusting of, of silver and then their iconography was green in 30k and then as it came closer to the uh, to the to the current color scheme it's more of a turquoise, I think, rather than straight blue. It's more of like a blue-green, like a sea-green kind of look. And they've got this weird, like, scale, I, I guess, pattern on them. Eh, it's not weird. I think it's interesting, but it's going to be fun to paint. And the scales are usually done in green if you look at the White Dwarf interpretations of them. But I guess a terrific example of... A color scheme that has gone completely off the rails between their founding in 30k and Warhammer 40k is the Thousand Suns. Currently they are the ones that have a very turquoise kind of color scheme but originally it was red with gold trim or red with it says gold here but all the ones that I know have them with silver trim but yeah take a look at that now they've got these rubric helmets helmet crests and blue with gold trim and before it was red with gold trim. So that's kind of like completely opposite ends of the color spectrum there. So I'm gonna love going back to the original color schemes of these first founding legions and I hope